everyone, it's Liam with Lovely Scrappin and I'm here with the design team project for Lindy Stamp Gang. I'm going to apologize in advance for the sniffles. I've been <laughs> quite sick over the last, uh, I don't know, what, few weeks now? <laughs> it's one thing after another with me, so I'm just going to apologize in advance for the sniffling. Looking down and having a cold that really doesn't help. So, um, Anyways, you guys, so I really wanted to make a fun big jumbo tag. Um, very grunge, vintage sort of a feel to it. So. Um, and I wanted to use lots of Lindy's on it, of course, and do a very fun mixed media type of, of look. Lots of different types of media on there and different elements. So that was sort of the overall look I was going for. This jumbo tag is eight and a half inches by four inches. You guys have probably seen me do lots of jumbo tags. I've been a jumbo tag fan for quite a while, ever since I found some at my LSS a long time ago. Um, so anyways, I did a start to finish video on this, you guys, so I'm not going to go in a lot of detail right now because I've tagged on the, um, the start to finish process and I'm going to go into a lot of detail in that um, start to finish process. So keep watching if you want to see me put this together. And um, also I will post a link down below to my blog and I will have the Lindy Stamp Gang products that I used for this tag listed um, on my blog. So you can just click on them and it'll take you directly to the store so you can purchase them. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, let me come in a little bit closer here. So basically what I wanted to do um, for the background was do my own tissue paper sort of a look. So you'll see me in the start to finish stamping on some white tissue paper um, in a bunch of different areas. Lots of fun different vintage looking stamps. And um, you know first I did a sort of a distressed look with the, the base of the tag to get a blue background and then I adhered my tissue tape in a very crinkled look with Mod Podge. And so turning it over you can kind of see the fun texture and crinkled look that it gives. And you can see the stamping and a bit of the blue from the tag that I colored underneath because um, I knew that this tissue paper is very thin and it's white so some of the color would be seen behind it and then I did a bit of spraying on top as well with some Lindy's and then I'd um, use some acrylic paints and uh, just got this really fun um, textured vintage grunge kind of a look on the back and this I might need to gesso a little bit to lighten up or I might use this Jack Frost spray for, uh, frozen Jack Frost spray to lighten this area up a bit just so I can um, write with my black marker on there and it'll come up a little bit easier because it is a bit dark right now but anyways that's kind of just the way I've left it right now and turning it back over I'll come in so at the top I'll just quickly sh tell you I just used some thick thick twine and I did some spraying of it uh, with some Lindy's and gessoing it to grunge it up a bit used a big huge honkin brad here and um, I used stencils from the crafter, Crafters Workshop, the uh, little tile one, and used some texture paste in the background, did lots of fun texture in the background, and I even used some mica um, powders from Lindy's, as well as crackle accents to get this really cool effect here, and um, it's kind of a bubbled look, and you'll see it in the start to finish how I achieved that. It's, it's hard to make it out on camera, but when you look up really close, it's quite shiny, and it's really fun. Love, love the way that turned out. I was kind of experimenting with my micas. <laughs> so um, I have some I am roses here and here, some handmade flowers here. This is made out of canvas and the tattered uh, floral dye from Tim Holtz. And this is just a rolled book page rose that I made. And I um, have done a tutorial on that um, previously and I can post a link to that down below if you're interested. I've got lots of fun little elements in here. This is actually from a trash can I bought from the dollar store specifically for this black wire mesh look and um, Michael's key here. Lots of Tim Holtz metal embellishments here and here. Swivel clasp. This little vial here is from um, sky blue pink and it's got this cute little cork in it that has a hole in it that you can hook you know so you can dangle it as a charm so that was kind of fun and I just tied some cheesecloth around it and filled it with some um, beads and I kind of gessoed it a little bit to grunge it up and buttons and gears um, some iron roses leaves in here more gears and some bead landing embellishments gears and also the um, sort of a what do you call it a ruler metal ruler there. Lots of cheesecloth poking out, sort of kind of going on an angle here and um, kind of coming out in different areas. Key landing, or a cane company, <laughs> key landing, oh my goodness, a cane company key. Um, and oh, a bead landing um, little 
clock spinner there as well. So lots of fun using different elements on here, a little pen nib. And then this I think was uh, my mind's eye embellishment and it was just kind of a sparkly silver and I just grunged it up, I painted it with black acrylic paint and then I used some embossing powder from Lindy Stamp Gang. It's a copper color and again you'll see me do this in the video. And I just kind of grunged it up and, and uh, just hit some points here with that. So that's kind of cool. And then I made a stick pin. And then I did some spraying afterwards with lots of Lindy's. So lots and lots of layering of embellishments, of media, all kinds of different fun things. So I had lots of fun creating this tag. And again, check out my blog for more details on the products used. And keep watching for the uh, detailed start to finish process. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Take care and happy scrapping. Bye now. All right, so I'm just taking some of my sprays here and I'm getting ready to basically do the base coat of the tag. So I've got the Frozen Jack Frost, the um, Danny Zuko's Denim, and the, again, the links will be on my blog. And here I'm just spraying it on my nonstick craft mat by Ranger, spraying some water on it um, to help it kind of puddle up a little bit. And then basically you do this in layers. So you do your first layer down and then you um, you dry it. And then I, I decided here I wanted more of the denim color in there and more dark. So I just, uh, you know, sprayed some down there and dabbed it in, dried it again, doing the same thing, dabbing it in and drying it. And you get all kinds of fun, um, you know, looks like the water drops and splatters and all kinds of fun stuff. So that's basically what I'm doing to both sides of the tag. I'm just sort of going through... Um, layering it, drying it, layering it, and drying it. And I'm not worrying about the tag curling, it will straighten out later on. And if you do have a problem with it curling, you can iron it or put a stack of books, heavy books on it, and it will straighten out as well. And so in here I'm taking the Danny Zuko's denim again and just um, taking all the like the manila parts that are still um, sh you know showing and that aren't really covered with paint or spray and I'm just sort of taking it and uh, and going in those areas and just making some highlights or lowlights I should say of the dark denim I'm also letting it sort of drip letting gravity sort of do its thing and drip And I just keep doing it until I'm happy with the look. So This is kind of a neat uh, background, especially if you're doing multiple colors and all kinds of things. So really fun to play with. Um, so here I'm just taking tissue paper, just the white tissue paper, you know, that you can, you know, stuff in the bags, gift bags and stuff like that. I just got a bunch from my dollar store because I always have, you know, tissue <laughs> for wrapping gifts and stuff. I'm just taping the corners onto my um, table here and it just helps me with the stamping so it doesn't slide or shift. And all I'm doing is just I selected a bunch of stamps from my stash, taking the archival ink um, and just stamping it in random places. This stamp here I remember I got from Big Lots. It's an Inka Dinka Do. Um, it, it doesn't actually have a name on it like as to like like the model name or whatever you want to call it. But um, I, I got it for two bucks at, at uh, Big Lots, so that was a good score. And then the script one is also an Inka Dinka Do, and then these small ones are all the Michaels, um, you know, dollar fifty stamps. Super fun to use and fun to make collages with. It kind of reminds me of the newspaper print, you know, the like the bags that you can get. You can even do this on just craft color bags too, and and alter it to make it look kind of like it was like that anyway, like newspaper print. And so I'm pretty much covering up the uh, entire piece and I sort of eyeballed it, you know, with the tag to kind of get an idea how much is going to cover my tag front and back. So here just sort of smoothing out the tag and getting ready and I got some Mod Podge matte and I'm just going to put a good coat over top of um, the tag so that my, um, I want a good coat so that my tissue paper will slide a little bit so I can crumple it up so it doesn't tear because if it's too thin of a coat it won't slide. So crumple up the tissue paper and then just bunch it up like this. So having that thick amount of Mod Podge helps um, for movement of the tissue paper. And then I'm doing the exact same thing on the other side. And then I'll just trim off the excess with some scissors. You'll see here in a little bit after it's dry. So just scrunching it up and getting a nice crinkled texture look. And now I'm just going to cut off the, the excess.
And again, if you have the Tim Holtz tissue paper, then you don't have to do this <laughs> homemade way. But I, I just I don't have that um, Seven Gypsy or the Tim Holtz tissue paper, so I just made my own. Another do-it-yourself type of tip. Here I'm just distressing the edges that I cut with my fingernail. It's kind of roughen it up a little bit. And I'm just uh, getting the hole back where the tag was, or the, the hole in the tag was. And then I'm just kind of drying it with my heat tool a little bit. Then I'm going to go with some dark uh, dark chocolate truffle starburst spray. And I'm going to just spray in just a, a couple random spots just to bring out some brown in there. And then I'm going to dry it off with my heat tool. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. And I'm taking the um, Crafters Workshop little mini tiles uh, stencil. It's a 6x6 one and some Liquidex um, modeling paste. It's a medium gel. And I'm just going to go in some random areas and, and get some texture going with the little mini tiles. And I'm just using one of those palette knives, sort of like a spatula type of thing to scrape it on. Gives you a nice smooth finish. And I'm putting it on in a medium coat, not really thick and not really thin. Now I'm taking some micas, and that's the, uh, I'm going to have them linked down below, but the, the burnished brown, deep burnished brown, and the Indian summer turquoise. I think it's called and basically I'm, I kind of experimented earlier to see if I like the technique and I did so I'm going to do it in this tutorial which I'm doing right now and I'm using crackle accents you can use glossy accents as well because it dries um, hard and kind of glossy and I'm taking the mica and pretty much mixing it with the crackle accents this won't actually crackle you guys um, I just wanted to conserve my glossy accents because I'm going through it like crazy so that's why I decided to use crackle but both will work fine. Um, the crackle accents is quite viscous. It's a lot thicker than the um, than the glossy accent, so it makes it easy to spread with the palette knife. So right now I'm just um, putting it in some random spots, but making sure that I'm doing it thick because when I apply the heat tool to it, um, the heat from the heat tool to it, I want it to bubble. And I didn't have quite enough um, of the mixture, so I did mix some more up um, after I, I dry this, and I'll apply some more on. So basically you're going to heat it up until it starts to bubble and you can see it bubbling there and when if you leave the bubbles and don't flatten them with your finger then they'll harden that way and it gives a really cool shiny bubble sort of a texture. So here I just applied a little bit more that I made and put it on there and you can see it bubbling there at the top. A really fun way to use your micas. You guys can make paints. You can mix your micas with just like white acrylic paint to to make it a beautiful shimmer kind of a metallic look of paint. You can do so much. You can make your own sprays. It's already got the um, binding agent in it, the gum arabic, so you don't have to add any kind of binding agent. You can literally like rub it on your projects, and it will just look like like a nice beautiful chalky look. Or you can add it just to water and spray it on. Here I'm just taking the frozen Jack Frost and just adding a little bit to the tag and making it a little bit more light because it was quite dark and I wanted a bit more light and then I went over with scintillating silver because I just love the shimmer that the scintillating silver adds so I have added that as well and that's a glitz spritz so it's just it's no color it's just the um, just this the very light silver shimmer and I just added a bit to the back as well just some of the scintillating silver and the um, frozen Jack Frost as well. I'm um, here. I'm going to make my own flower with canvas, and I've cut out two of the or three of the large um, flower petals from the tattered florals die from Tim Holtz, and then two of the smaller or the medium ones, I should say. And I added a little bit of water to it. I'm just like rolling it in my hand and fraying it up and crinkling it because I want it to be really crinkled and curled, kind of a thing. And the water helps to curl it. It also helps to um, get the fraying going with your hand and add some friction. Now I'm just going to take the two large and one medium and just spraying it with the dark chocolate truffle starburst spray. And then I'm going to take the um, two shades of the blue I used previously and I'm just adding it to um, these 
the, the remaining two um, petals and then I'm going to be mixing the color a little bit adding a bit of blue to the brown like I'm doing now and then adding a bit of brown to the blue which I'm doing now and then just drying it up heat setting it and sort of speeding up the process a bit and then I'm basically going to layer it with brown blue brown blue brown and after thinking about it and, and seeing it, and I had already glued it down, but I could probably do without the very final, like it would be good right there. Um, I could do without this brown one, but I went and put it on anyway, because, you know, I'm layering like crazy. <laughs> and I will put some cheesecloth on there as well as um, a center, and you'll see that in a little bit. And I'm just adding the frozen Jack Frost to lighten it up to sort of um, go with the color palette that I'm, I'm doing on the tag. I didn't want it too bold. And then just adding some scintillating silver to add a bit more shimmer to it. And so here I'm playing with the leaves there and the flower is actually going to get moved as well. But here I'm just um, adding the cheesecloth to the center. And then I'm going to actually add a bigger bread or button actually. It's a vintage button from Joanne. The store. <laughs> And now I'm just going to um, take a bit of black acrylic paint and just a sponge and I'm just going to go along the edges of the tag just to really bring out the edges and um, make it a little bit more bold and stand out and look a little bit more grungy and vintage. And I'll do that to both sides here and add a little bit in the in the tag as well. here I'm just adding it in the tag. So now I'm just adding a little bunch of a bunch of um, little beads to this cute little vial I got from Sky Blue Pink and um, right now I'm taking the pitch black alcohol ink and I'm just going to color the little cap, um, the little plunger piece is just like a, a white kind of clear somewhat white plunger thing with a hole in it and I wanted it to be black just to kind of go with the project a bit more so I've just put some alcohol ink on it and I'm letting it dry right now and I lost a bunch of footage you guys of me placing this stuff on the tag um, I thought and I didn't lose the footage I should correct myself I was I pressed the button and I actually pressed off instead of on so I wasn't recording <laughs> a uh, moment anyway so I've taken that black wire mesh is actually from a trash can that I bought from the dollar store purposely for the use of for crafts <laughs> I took it apart and I've got all kinds of fun embellishments some buttons from my stash this is a Michael's key um, that's sort of a copper color and that's a Tim Holtz number uh, numeral plaque or number plaque I can't remember I'm adding glossy accents just to the little um, brad pieces so they don't spin around when I put it down so this is just the ornate plate and I like using a combination when I have big metal things or even small ones I like to make sure I put glossy accent on because I know it's not going to go anywhere but I put hot glue on it as well because it will just hold it in place until the um, glossy accent dries because it can take some time for the glossy accents to really dry and that's a big gear from bead landing and an I am rose flower just putting down and I'm kind of playing with placement on a few things and here I'm just going to glue down the numeral plaque there and I added glossy accents and some hot glue to it so it'll stay in place just putting a button down there figuring out where I want that key <laughs> You guys, I even edited out a lot of uh, playing around too, <laughs> moving and taking it away. Uh, you don't want to see that because literally it could take me hours to do projects. This this tag probably, I did it yesterday and today, probably a good two and a half hours each, so five hours, probably solid time of doing this tag. <laughs> I love cutting gears too and putting half in one area, half in another. Stretches it out, <laughs> makes it go longer. 
I'm just putting a clamp down just to help hold that in place while the glossy accent dries. And here I'm just shortening the chain a little bit because I just want it to be a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to hang my little vial on there along with the bead landing clock spinner. And then I decided I want to tie a little bit of cheesecloth threads on there. So I've done that, put it in a knot, and then I'm just going to trim off the edge, um, the ends. And then I just added a little teeny tiny bit of glossy accent in the center to hold the knot so it doesn't come out. And I decided I want some more of this wire mesh just above the ornate plate. So I'm just cutting some out here. I just added a bit of um, hot glue to that to hold it in place. And then the excess glossy accent from that gear will also hold it in place. So there's lots of layering of glue as well. I'm just putting a couple more gears there. And then again, clamping it down. These little clamps I found at my dollar store, they got a whole whack load of them for like two bucks. So I got a couple packs, and they're so handy to have to clamp down your things. And here I just uh, made a stick pin. I'm seeing if I like it there. And now I'm going to use glossy accents to just um, adhere the beads on there. And I'm just going to put it upside down in a little cap and let it dry. Here's the Making Memories um, metal embellishment. And I'm just adding some black acrylic paint to it. I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to add this Midnight Copper um, Obsidian, I think it's called, um, embossing powder from Lindy's. And um, just a little bit of embossing um, ink from T Tim Holtz. And it's just a little tiny bit because I just want to hit some of the edges. Um, to make it kind of look distressed. So I'm just brushing off a little bit because I don't want too much. I just want enough to sort of accent it a little bit. And then I'm just going to hit it with my heat tool. You can kind of see the shiny areas. It's a little difficult to see on camera, but um, I also wanted to add a little bit more depth to it. So I just wanted to highlight a few areas with some white acrylic paint. And then I decided I needed to make it stand out a little bit more from, from the tag in the background. So I am going to go in and add a little bit of black as well, just to darken up some of the edges, just to help it pop out a bit from the tag. And that's the way I end up keeping it. So now um, that I have everything where I want it to go, I'm just going to do my final spraying. So I've got the dark chocolate truffle and I'm spraying it in some areas and I'm wiping off the hard surfaces like the metals and the pearls and stuff that I don't really want it to puddle on. You could leave it and have the splatter marks. That looks pretty cool too. And I did leave it in some areas, but for the most part I just wanted to wipe it off the gears of the pearls. And then I'm going to go in with my blues. Same. Uh, these are all the same colors that I used um, from the get-go. So I kind of kept them all together and I'm sticking with the same color theme. So I'm just heating it up a little bit and drying it because I'm going to be hitting it with some gesso here in a little bit. And um, I forgot to put my stick pin in <laughs> and adhere my hope sign down. So I'm going to put hope down and then I'll be uh, putting some gesso on in, in a little bit for the final touch. Here I'm just pulling up some of the cheesecloth to kind of get it to stand out a little bit. And here's some acrylic gesso and this I just got from Walmart. It's um, just, the, it was my very first big thing of gesso. So and I, I really like it actually. It's nice and thick and I love the texture it gives. So, And I'm just hitting all the different areas I want to kind of highlight with the gesso. The metal pieces and I love using the sponge brush because it gives it like this spongy bubbled look. Looks pretty cool. You can use your finger and rub it on too. You can do whatever you like. And then I decided I wanted to add this cute little bottle cap, <laughs> mini bottle cap embellishment. So I put a lot of gesso on it and I'm just going to stick it in this one little corner that I felt needed something. So basically now after I'm done um, with the gesso, I'm just going to be adding this big huge eyelet. And um, right now it's going to cut out because my camera died, but I added the twine after and sprayed the twine to coordinate with the tag, and that's pretty much it, you guys. So here's the final look again, and thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your support. Be sure to check out my blog. Take care. Bye now.